Recording. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you all so much for coming to Caitlin Mackey's solo exhibition. I'm Joyce, the founder of I Am Art House, a nonprofit organization that supports youth development initiatives and emerging artists globally. And in order to have the best experience today, um, if you could put on view, put the speaker in view, it will provide the best experience today for the exhibition. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Caitlin. Hey. Uh, hi, everyone. So yeah, I'm Caitlin. Um, oops, there you go. So I'm a 22 photographer originally from South Africa, but I've been living in Switzerland for 14 years now, studying international relations at the University of Geneva. And so I started taking photos in grade eight when my, I just randomly took this photography class and my teacher noticed that I had a good eye. So she encouraged my parents to buy me a camera. Uh, so then I got it for Christmas and then I just started taking photos. Um, and yeah, it took me a couple of years to really find my style, which I now will describe as um, surreal self-portraits. Uh, so I often use my photography as a way to uh, yeah, just like express pain um, or happiness or connect with God because I am a Christian. Um, yeah. So this is one of the first photos I ever took where I really discovered um, my style and what I was supposed to do with my photography. Uh, when I was really starting out in photography, I took a picture of this dragonfly in a pond and my dad said to me, um, like a photo is supposed to tell a story. And I never really understood what he meant by that until I took this photo. And so I took this photo at a time when I was really struggling with my mental health. And one day I decided to just go take photos in the forest. And as I was walking to the forest, I just remember thinking about this battle inside of me between um, just like dark and light and life and death and I felt like the death was winning and I was just really struggling um so I tried to take photos and they weren't working out so um I was gonna go home but then it started snowing so I just randomly like plunked my camera down in a random spot um and just randomly took this photo and then when I got home when I was editing it um I realized like there was actually a clear divide between the trees uh with the living trees on one half and the dead trees on the other half. And I happened to be looking up at the living trees. And also at that moment, the sun came out and shone on the living trees just when I took the camera. So I felt like it was God's way of saying to me, like I am greater and um, life will win and light will win as well. And you will get through this battle. And this is another one of an expression of pain um at times when I was really really struggling like the only thing I could do to comfort myself was just lie in bed and listen to music and just think of these photos that I could create that it could express my pain um and also poetry because I also write poetry so here in this image you have the three um you have the three hands which represent the three types of mental illness that I've struggled from uh, and then I wrote a poem to go with it so the harder you fight it, the louder it gets. Even its whisper echoes as a scream inside your head, piercing the identity and reality of the soul swallowing happiness whole. And then I, as well as using art to express pain, I also used art to express my relationship with God and how at times it just felt so impossible to reach him um, not only because of pain, but just also because of my mind just feeling so cluttered with other things and finding it so hard to find God in the space of that cluttered mind. So again, I wrote a poem to go with this photo. And this is one of my favorite poems that I've ever wrote. Cluttered is this mind of mine, full of, buses, full of boxes, bursting, dusty thoughts, cobwebs caught in deep desires. Fear so old, they're skeletons, but skeletons still much alive. And amongst all this mess of mine, you are the most hard to find. So just about having so many, 
so many fears and so many desires and so many thoughts that it's just sometimes so hard to actually find God and focus on him. And so that was what that poem was about. And this one was taken at a time where I felt like I was finally healing. Um, and so I think it's really cool actually how I have photos from um, like one of some of my worst times at life in life and then photos from when I'm finally doing better. And so I can actually see myself progress and myself heal through these photos. And so this is a photo I took uh, by a field next to my house. I added in lots of the dandelions and changed the color of the sky. Um, and while I was taking the, this photo, this phrase came into my head. You knew my dark before I ever saw light. Your love isn't spoiled by a poisoned heart, um, which is just about how God knows our darkness even before we were born and how his love isn't ruined by how horrible we can be sometimes and that his love is unconditional. This one as well um, is about God, a God pay a place to call to home. So agape in the Bible um, is an expression of God's unconditional love. And so I took this a couple months ago, not that long ago, actually, uh, just to represent coming back home to God and coming back home to God's love after straying away from him. And this one um, I took in Greece when I went there for a family vacation. Um, and I started writing a poem at the beginning of the week, again, just about joy and suffering. Um, because at the beginning of that week, for the first time in a long time, I finally felt joy and happiness um, in God, despite the circumstances. But then as the week went on, that I felt that joy just drain away. Um, and so actually, as I felt myself progress in my emotions, I continued my poem. So I kind of have like two parts to it. And then when I took this photo, um, this photo was kind of like the conclusion of my poem, because when I was taking it, I kind of realized um, my conclusion to that thought process I had had during the week to do with joy um, and suffering. And then I wrote the final um, part of the poem just after I took this photo. So this is the poem. Standing in awe and reverence of you, a greater joy my heart does find than in a life composed of perfect circumstances. For above is a glory so great that forgotten is world sting beneath my feet. But often shattered by winds of tribulation and longing, too broken is my heart for joy to build in me her home. And so through the crack she bleeds until vacant is the heart. But whilst I dwell in the empty winds of tribulation and longing, I ask not for deliverance from suffering, but for joy's return. For standing in joy and wonder of you, a greater strength my heart does find than in the healing of life's imperfect circumstances. Because at the beginning of the week, I had this idea like, God's joy is greater than a perfect life. Um, but through, and then throughout the week where I just felt so beaten down um, by just so many things in life, I came to the conclusion that not only is God's joy greater than what could have been a perfect life, but is actually greater than the healing of an imperfect life. And that we can still have joy despite being unhealed. This one is about uh, my mom's chronic pain. Uh, my mom has a chronic illness where she suffers from chronic pain. And she has to smoke these weed cigarettes and she hates smoking them. Um, and so one day I just felt, I don't know why, but I just felt drawn to my mom's cigarettes uh, to take, to do something with them in a photo. Um, so I started taking this photo in front of the mirror and then I really understood like, okay, I'm gonna make this about my mom's chronic pain. Um, so I took this photo of me in front of the mirror just with that, like the expression of like having to do something you hate in order to get through the day and to, to cope with that pain. 
And this one, so I'm showing the poem before because I came up with this poem when I was on the tram, I think, just randomly. Uh, so sometimes I let go of doubt, failure and pain and set free my soul to dance in the rain. And for a good like two years, I could just never find the location to represent this photo uh, in a picture. Um, I could just never find the right place to really get this picture because I had a very specific idea in my mind. Um, and then in the summer, I went to the mountains with my family. And on the last day, my parents were like, okay, we're gonna go quickly. We're gonna go up and walk this hill if you wanna come with. So I went with, and then at like, like that exact moment, there was a storm coming and I had my raincoat on. And so I took this photo, which just perfectly encapsulates the photo. I mean, the poem. Um, so yeah, sometimes I write my poem before and then I find an image to match it. Or sometimes I take a photo and then I write a poem to match it. So it really, it really varies and it really depends. Um, and this is a photo I took in South Africa on safari. Um, I asked my dad what to caption it and he said, we are family, no if, and, or buts. Um, and then, yeah, these are just some general photos showing uh, my other styles, because I also do some micro photography. Uh, so here's some of some flowers and then a butterfly. And then also some travel photography. Uh, this one I took on my way to Zermatt. Um, and that's actually her reflection, but the reflection is so strong. It kind of looks like it's actually uh, her. Uh, so yeah, and this one was again in South Africa. Um, it looks like it was really taken deep in the wild, but it was actually um, just in like a patch, a patch of trees in the middle of this quite um, busy path. And there was this monkey chasing a bird. So I watched him chase the bird um, and then he caught the bird and then he just like <laughs> was watching me while he was eating its head off, um, which was pretty cool. And so, yeah, I took a photo of it. And I think it's like, it was a really cool moment to, to capture. And then I also do some street photography. So here's just some examples of that. I don't often do street photography because I get kind of nervous taking photos of random people in the street. Um, but these two were of my friends, so that was easier. And then just a couple more examples. Uh, so the one on the left, I, yeah, like added the lightning bolt um, and also made the sky look kind of stormy. Um, and then the one on the right was also one of the first photos I took where I really was discovering my style. I took this about four years ago. Uh, so yeah, I flipped the photo upside down and so it made it look like I was standing, doing a handstand on the ceiling. And then I also added some dust speckles. And the one on the left, um, yeah, I just made it look like there was some trees coming out of my, my jumper. Um, I really love editing in Photoshop. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorite things to do. So um, that one was a fun one to edit on the left. And then on the right was in Malta. Uh, that one was actually quite socially awkward to take because it was on a busy path and I was just running through trees, taking pictures of myself, which was quite awkward, but gotta do what you gotta do. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. There you go. Joyce, should I stop sharing my screen now? Caitlin, um, I can kind of, if you'd like, I can kind of lead this next like Q and A session. Um, if you want to keep sharing your screen, um, sometimes, yeah, maybe people ask a question about a specific piece and then you can go back to it. Oh, okay. I'll keep my screen it's, on. It's also up to you. <laughs> um, but if you want to leave it here for a little while, go for it. Um, but yeah, now we'll go into, Caitlin, if you're down, like a kind of question and answer session. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to turn your camera on, unmute yourself, um, ask there, or feel free to ask in the chat. Um, I will keep track of the chat and can kind of relay those questions to you, Caitlin, as they come in. Um, 
so yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing. It's just really, really beautiful work. Um, I personally don't really know a lot about photography and editing, um, but I just think it, yeah, that's really great. So thank you for sharing. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions, please send those in the chat or feel free to ask Caitlin directly. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Amazing, amazing work. And I love your poetry that goes with, with your work. Um, I have a question about if you could go back to the piece with your sweater, the orange sweater, I think, and there's like trees. Yeah. yeah that one. So could you maybe walk us through the process of like how you would do that? Like you have the photo first and then do you find like other photos of trees and like how, how does that, how do you do that? Um, yeah, so I had the, the photo and then um, I just got some pictures of some trees. Um, and then you kind of just like, um, it was a while ago, I can't exactly remember, but you kind of just slowly blend them together um, with a brush. And then you also have to delete because my sweater was obviously going all the way down to the bottom of the screen. So I had to delete that part of my sweater and then add in background to it. So then it looks like continuous, the background looks continuous. Um, and then, yeah, you just take a picture of the trees and you like blend it in um, and then try and also get some of the texture of the sweatshirt to come through. And then I add the birds and then I added the, the shadow to give it some depth. Yeah. That's awesome, thanks for sharing. Caitlin, the first question in the chat is, do you prefer taking photos with yourself as the subject or not and why? Um, so do I prefer taking my own port pictures or do I take pictures of other people? Is that the question? Yes. And then like which which you prefer and why? Yeah. Um, uh, I would say on a if I need to take photos just because it's like, I feel like I need to for myself and my healing, I definitely prefer doing it alone. Um, also, cause that way I can, there's like no pressure. Um, and I can just like go with my, my own flow and try my own ideas, my own ideas without feeling like, oh, someone's gonna think that's like a weird idea. Uh, cause often when I was trying to take pictures of other people, I just found myself like blocking myself so much. Cause I just was like, no, that's a stupid idea. Like they're going to think I'm weird. Um, but then on the other hand, I do really like, cause it's just like, on some ways, uh, taking pictures of myself is satisfying because I'm like expressing myself. But then on the other hand, it's taking pictures of other people is also just as satisfying because you're actually behind the camera in the moment of taking the pictures instead of like being in front of it, trying to like get the composition and the focus of yourself, which is really hard. Um, but yeah, to, uh, in the overall, I would say I prefer taking it by myself of myself just because that's how I like to express my myself, yeah. Awesome, that, um, that question was from David, by the way, I forgot to mention that. Um, there's another question from Stephen. Um, in the first slide, did the picture on the right have a real tornado? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Um, thankfully not. No, I, I added <laughs> that in. Um, yeah, and actually, oh, it would have been fun if, if I had come up with the, the original photos so you can see how different they are. But I actually also edited in the flowers, those yellow flowers. Um, those weren't there in the photo. Uh, neither were the birds. Um, and I also just changed the color a bit of the trees. So yeah. Awesome. Um, Gail, you have a hand raised. Did you want to ask Caitlin a question? Yes, I do. Um, Hey Caitlin, um, it's great work. Thank you for sharing. Um, yes, I was just wondering about where in the process is it that you most connect with God? Is it in you taking the photos? Is it you thinking about the composition? Is it you thinking about like the background? Um, or is it more in terms of like the editing process? 
because I know that um, much about making art and making work is in the process. I just wanted to know a bit more about where best you feel um, your connection to, to God the most in the process, if that question makes sense. Yeah, I feel like that's actually, that's such a good question. Um, and it's something I've thought about a lot. Um, but it's true, like when I'm taking the photos, when I'm actually taking the photos, that's probably the least fun part of it. And the part where I struggle the most, because it's actually, it's frustrating taking photos of yourself. It's quite hard. <laughs> um, so I definitely connect a lot through the editing um, because like I sometimes describe my photography as like the sixth sense that God gave me um, in like, sometimes I make decisions and I don't know why I've made that decision mm. until I'm editing. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense because, because I've placed myself there. It means I can add myself. I can add something into it here and then that makes sense to do with like composition and like leading the eyes and everything um but in the moment when I was taking the photo like I didn't know why I suddenly felt the being drawn to position myself there um mm. and so I'd say when I'm editing the photos is definitely the part where like I see it all coming together um and I can see why I made the decisions that I made while I was taking the photos. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely say during the, the editing. Amazing, great, thank you. Yeah. Caitlin, there's another question in the chat. Um, this one's from Guadalupe. Can you explain a little bit about the role that nature has on your photography? Oh, uh, this is a good question. Um, yeah, I would say a really big role. Um, when I, again, going back to this idea of like the sixth sense, like when I'm looking at a new scene, like in nature or something, I have to get this very like specific feeling. <laughs> I sound so crazy, but like, um, like if I stumble across this place where I know I'm going to take pictures, like I just get like this adrenaline rush, um, and I just feel so connected to it. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is where I need to take photos. And it doesn't even have to be like the most prettiest of places, like some place which is so beautiful. But if I don't have that connection to that place, um, like the photos never work out and they just feel like so empty. Um, so yeah, I would say nature definitely has a big part in that where it just feels like it kind of guides me as to where I'm supposed to take that, take those photos. Um, and a lot of my photos are outside. So, yeah. Another question from Jonas is actually there's, there's a series of questions. So feel free to answer these however you would like. Um, but the questions are, how do you go about coming up with ideas for your photos? Do you have a process for it or is it more spontaneous? And then related to that, of the ideas you do have, how many actually make it into a final piece? Okay, uh, so how do I come up with my idea? My ideas, so sometimes, um, like I said, when I was in a lot of um, pain, like I would literally just lie in my bed and put on music and just like think of ideas um as a way to express myself and often those ideas did not work out um I would either go to the place to take those photos and they just wouldn't look good um or I just wouldn't be like really connecting with the piece um but often what happened is that that original idea led me to a location and then I discovered something else in that location um I'm trying to think if I have an example here of that okay yeah I guess here with this one with the the car um I originally had a different idea um not even to do with the car but just in that place but then when I was there um I just kind of yeah fell into it and I can see my camera screen through my phone um so often I just like look at my myself through my phone and I kind of just do various 
things and then see what I connect to. Um, Cause often there's like a certain either like position or, or stance or place in the photo where I feel like, okay, this is where, this is where it feels right to take this photo. So then um, I take it and then I understand why in the editing process, like I said. So, uh, so sometimes the I ideas are planned, uh, but then they never go as planned. I usually end up doing something else for it. Um, and so, yeah, I usually, it's usually more guided by the place itself where um, I know I'm supposed to take photos in a specific place rather than having a specific idea of a photo to take. Um, so I'd say it's more spontaneous, yeah. And I've had a lot of ideas, so many ideas, and so many of them have not made the final cut um, just because I feel limited by my own editing abilities sometimes, uh, which really frustrates me. Um, so yeah. Another question from Gail is, would you consider your artwork as or like art therapy? Oh yeah, definitely. I've actually never thought about it like that, but uh, I would say definitely, yes. Um, and like I said, I actually, I think it's so cool now, like even just going through my Instagram page, um, like my Instagram page just shows my whole story and just like having those moments where I, ha I had that really intense pain and then moments of healing from that and then moments of battling with other things. So it's kind of just like a whole a collection of um, my own therapy through my art. So yeah, I would say it's like art therapy. Well, there are no more questions in the chat right now, um, but yeah, feel free to keep sending those in. Um, I have a question for you. Um, so you are from South Africa, but you're living in Switzerland. So you kind of, I feel like both of these places are really different. Um, do you feel like that is like reflected in your work and how um, have those two places that you've lived in um, kind of influenced your work? Is there like a certain relationship between the two countries? Um, how has that kind of looked in your process, I guess? So I actually only lived in South Africa till I was five. So I don't have a connection with the country much at all. Um, so apart from when I was actually doing a safari in South Africa, um, where you can see the, the wildlife photos, um, I would say those are the only time that South Africa really only ever comes into my photos. Um, so I'm definitely more influenced by Switzerland and just like the mountains and the scenery and everything, yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, Joyce has a question. What type of work are you hoping to make in the future? Um, I'd like to do a lot more heavily edited stuff because I'm actually I mean I know Photoshop pretty well but I'm not a pro so there's still a lot of things I can't do and um, my kind of my motto is that when I'm working in Photoshop like it's possible to do what I want to do I just don't know how so I just need to find out how but um, yeah so there's a lot of stuff I want to do which I can't do just because I don't feel like I have the knowledge yet but because I know it is possible in Photoshop because Photoshop is crazy powerful. Um, I know it is possible. I just need to put time into understanding it. Um, oh, I would also really like to do like did a digital art and drawing. Um, and sometimes people like actually draw things into their photos, which I think is really cool. Um, and also just drawing itself in Photoshop. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely something I want to do. Does anyone have any other questions for Caitlin? 
Gail asks, do your, do your photographs have names? Uh, <laughs> um, not really. I just kind of name them weird things so that I can, I can find them when I'm in my big messy collection on my hard drive. Um, but I still can't find them because I named them pretty badly. <laughs> so no, unfortunately they don't have names, but that would make them a lot easier to find if they did like for this presentation, I, it was a pain trying to find all of my, my photographs because my hard drive is just such a mess. Uh, so no, unfortunately not. David asks, how does it feel that moment you put new work out for people to see? Sometimes it's really exciting um, because it's like, oh, I, I took this really cool photo. Um, but sometimes it's hard because a lot of my photos are quite vulnerable. Uh, so sometimes I just post it and then I just put my phone away and don't look at it for a couple hours uh, just because it feels really hard to, to post. Um, so yeah, most of the time it feels good, but if it's a really vulnerable one, then it's quite hard. Joyce has a question. Do you have a favorite photographer or a digital artist? Yeah, so her name is uh, Georgia Rose Hardy. Um, she, her main, main platform is Instagram, and she was one of the main photographers who inspired me. Um, we basically have the, the same style, I would say. Um, but she's obviously a lot more experienced than me. And she also does a lot of surreal self-portraits. And yeah, she was definitely one of the people who really uh, inspired me and made me actually think about doing self-portraits in the first place. Oh, here's another question. Um, actually, two questions. <laughs> do you, oh, sorry, okay. Um, do you intend to do this as a career? Do you intend to make money from your work? Um, and then, like, if so, I guess, how do you put prices on a particular piece? Yeah, the question of the career, that's a, that's a tough one, because often I I feel like I should do it as a career else I'm kind of like wasting it. Um, but I don't see myself taking a career out of it uh, just because I don't want to make a passion uh, my career. And also I'm quite like a people lover and I like being in a team and everything. And I'm not really sure how I could combine that with my art. So. I definitely wouldn't be a solo artist going by myself to places. Um, but maybe if I was part of like a bigger organization working for art or something, maybe. Um, but I would never say no to making money from them. Um, but that isn't something I have had the time to develop fully yet. But it is something I would like to do, not even just for the money of it, just for... Um, being able to share my art and being able, I also just like the idea of running like a little business. So um, yes, maybe eventually. And so how do I put the pricings? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that's not something I've thought about either. Well, I have thought about it a little bit, but that's also a good question. Um, because really, I mean, for me, the only cost of the photo is my time. There's no, um, like taking the photo itself is not, doesn't cost me anything. So I would often feel like, okay, I can't really charge that much for it. But at the same time, like it is art. Um, so I do have the, the right to charge higher. Um, so yeah, I haven't decided on pricing, pricing yet. <laughs> Juan Lupe asks, 
asks, are you interested in practicing any other form of art? Yes, definitely. Uh, so like I said, I actually do already a little bit of digital art. Um, I'm thinking if I have any examples of those to pull up. Let me just stop sharing my screen for a second. Um, and I'll go see if I have any on my desktop right now. Yeah, here we go. So here's something I'm in, like, in the middle of doing in Photoshop. Um, just of a, a turtle with a little house. I was actually making this for Joyce. Um, for like the I am art house kind of like, I don't know, we we're gonna do something with it. Um, and then, yeah, here's another example. Um, so yeah, I do really in like, I do really like um, digital drawing. So that is definitely something I can see myself doing. Um, I just have to get into it and spend and dedicate more time to it. Um, and then, yeah, explore poetry more. Um, and I also play piano, so that's something. I've played piano for like uh, 13 years um, and did like a whole bunch of exams and stuff, but I've never really explored it freely. Um, so that's something I've been doing recently. Um, so yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Caitlin. Does anyone else have any final questions before we wrap up our time together? Well, thank you so much, Caitlin. Oh, your work is truly phenomenal. And if you all would like to see Caitlin again present her work, she will be part of a group exhibition on May 1st. So if you Follow us on Instagram at I am Art House, or if you um, subscribe to our newsletter through our website, um, you can stay updated for more. Um, next week, we'll be having another solo exhibition uh, featuring Marcela, who is from Colombia, and she's currently based in Barcelona, Spain. So thank you all so much for attending. Um, and thank you once again, Caitlin, for, um, for sharing your work and your story with us. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Yeah, thank you, Caitlin. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.